Good afternoon, everyone. Record-breaking winter cold. Don't worry, the climate explainers have it covered. It's unreliable diagnostics of planetary conditions as the ice melt rate increases. They're talking about the Arctic. When we look at the ice map, that's not even included on their regular ice extent. It's so far south, just above New York City. China's seventh country now for bubonic plague. And when we look back at Greenland ice cores, there's a definite correlation of grand solar minimum and disease outbreaks. Thousands of bats drop dead from the trees, frozen sharks. We were told the science was settled and now NASA detects electric blue strange clouds over Antarctica and they found that the winter air temperatures in many North American cities are correlated with the frequency of noctilucin clouds, but they still need to study it more because they just discovered that. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt2030 and click that bell so you can get the latest updates. And as we've seen over the last couple of weeks, when the record cold sweeps the northern hemisphere, snows in the Sahara Desert, record cold in Asia, record cold in Canada, United States, well, it's all explained on some magical feedback loop where that melting ice in the Arctic is causing hot air to push record cold down into places it's not been this cold in hundreds of years. So instead, they try to divert our attention to what was a six-hour record heat event down in Sydney, Australia. They have everything covered. Don't worry, climate explainers have it all covered. Global temperature becomes unreliable as a diagnostic of planetary conditions as the ice melt rate increases. And it's just because it's cold outside doesn't mean climate change is real. Keep believing in global warming. But what I really wanted to draw your attention to is this anomalous ice event happening between New York and Boston. Location on the map here. And what's really interesting is even with the NSIDC ice extent, and this is what they're trying to say that because of those little tiny blue areas inside the orange line there, that's causing all the extreme climate across the planet as those areas of a few hundred thousand square kilometers of ice not being there that's driving record cold temperatures across the planet so they're talking about all the ice melting but what's anomalous is this area that i showed you on the map is not even in the ice extent map because it just doesn't get ice normally it's not even included on this map as an ice area but let's take a look at how far out the ocean is frozen off of massachusetts that is miles and miles and miles out to sea and when we get an aerial view, you can really see the extent of the ice going out off the coast. I've linked everything below, so you can do your own research. All of the articles that I'm using are referenced in that comment box below the video. And here we are off of what's up with that in the comment board. Trump pokes fun at global warming critics, tells people to bundle up. Yeah, record cold temperatures, great idea, President Trump. People should be bundling up, taking care of their pets, insulating your homes, getting prepared for non-delivery to stores. What does the Daily Caller do? Pokes fun at him, troll in chief. Yeah, well, here's a guy who's trying to tell you to take precautions to get ready for record cold, yet the media is trying to make jokes out of it. People are dying in the streets from cold and our media is joking about this. Understand this from point one right here. They do not care about you. They are there for a diversion of smokescreen. They're going to lie to you until you freeze in your homes. There's no way that this media has our best interest in mind. It is a diversion for some plan at the end. And good luck in your preparations. We have just entered the reset button of the society. One of the effects of every grand solar minimum is disease outbreaks. So here we are, China, the seventh country this year, to confirm bubonic plague. Largest outbreak in 50 years in Madagascar. But let's go back in time. 50 years is far too short for us to even look for trends. Let's go back almost 4,000 years in time. See the ups and downs in temperature? That's natural to start with. So everything you've been told that we are the ones driving the climate to extremes... Uh, not exactly true. But what is true is every time we come into a grand solar minimum and the temperature drops due to electromagnetic forces, our magnetosphere weakening, whatever the feedback loop is, maybe our bodies get too weak from not the proper foods, but there is a direct correlation between plague outbreaks and grand solar minimums. At the very least, we should be having a discussion about this point alone. 
apart. International travel allows these things to spread so much more quickly than they did in the 1600s or 1800s when we traveled by horseback and train. Now you're on a plane and across the planet in a matter of hours. And this is from the NOAA paleoclimatology program NOAA who the one who keeps saying our temperatures are rising based on measurements have their own data showing that it's a natural cycle yet they tell us something else in the news for a political agenda jumping over to the big wobble this diametric opposite of stories shows exactly where our climate's heading now imagine our crops trying to deal with these changes down in Australia thousands of bats dropped dead from trees after record temperatures for six hours around Sydney and then suddenly after that heat bubble passed, it dropped 20 degrees in a matter of hours. Yet over on the east coast of the United States, frozen sharks, Minnesota colder than Mars, North Pole the coldest New Year in living memory, and our crops are supposed to handle this at the ultra extreme of heat and the ultra extreme of cold brought on by mixing jet streams because of our weakening magnetosphere. I could see how our bodies are actually going to be affected by this. We're electromagnetic beings ourselves. Our sun, electromagnetically connected to our planet. We, electromagnetic beings, are also going to have effects. So I could see how this would be a direct relationship as well with the immunity in our bodies. Now jumping over, this story makes me shake my head because we've been told all along the science is settled. They absolutely a thousand percent know what's happening and it's our fault with CO2. Yet here, this newest article off What's Up With That, Anthony Watts' site, NASA detects strange electric blue clouds over Antarctica. Now, noctilucent clouds are nothing unusual. They happen this season every time, but they're sort of in the wrong place, and it's a little bit larger than normal, the concentration this year. And also what they found with the noctilucent clouds, unexpected teleconnections between these clouds and temperatures in the northern U.S. cities. There's some kind of correlation with the frequency of these noctilucent clouds and temperatures in the northern hemisphere. Wait a second, you're just finding this out now? And they're even trying to figure it out so they can improve climate models and weather forecasting? Yet the science was settled. I thought you knew every feedback loop possible to humankind that could ever influence a system. And here you are just today. This is 2018. Scientists are just finding that there's a teleconnection and this might influence our weather patterns. Are you kidding me? and we're still not debating effects from the sun teleconnections electromagnetic connections across the planet what do you think happens between our star and our planet beautiful noctilucent clouds to leave you with here and i do thank you for spending your time listening to what i had to say the intensification is here it's on our doorstep this is a society reset button that has begun welcome to the first two weeks of the uh, new world that we're entering